What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's everybody? So this is going to be an early entry to Real Talk. This one right here, you guys, I did say in my video, my Real Talk recent video, that we was going to be getting back to Real Talk at the end of February. But I did get an email, and I was asked if I could do this before then due to the situation. I'm going to do this because I did have other things to do. Like, I did have to do, like, a makeup look or makeup test or makeup swap. You know, either way, I had to do something. So, as we are testing out this new makeup from She Glam, we're going to try not to cuss. But other than that, I hope you all are having, like, a really great day. That's the day I cleaned up my room. I got rid of all these clothes that I had never worn or didn't wear in, like, five or plus years. But, um, have, like, some nice outfits, some nice clothes, but you know you can't fit them because they're too small, but you just really don't want to get rid of them. So, that's how I've been feeling. Mm, but but I did put the clothes that I really wanted to keep that was too small in the bin because I do have plans on getting into them. I don't want to keep buying sizes up when I really want to go back to what I already have. Okay, so like, listen, remember I did say in my video that I wanted to get a job? Well, guess what? Okay. Your girl got a job. Okay, yes, I got a job. I do not start until February 26th, and it is with the health center. So I get to work remote, you know what I'm saying, from home. I'm happy about that. You guys, you know, I, I got a job. I'm, I'm shocked, okay? Let me tell y'all. So when I was filling out the application, right, you know, I had already did my resume. You know, I was filling out the application, and I was getting so nervous. I was getting so scared. And I was kind of like having anxiety as I was filling out the application. I, I just felt like I haven't filled out an application in so long. I felt like a newbie at filling out the application. I was just basically copying and pasting what I had written on my resume because it was the same questions and I attached my resume. So when it came to like other questions, I just was more or less, you know, like, okay, April, just be yourself. Stop trying to be perfect because ain't nobody perfect, but just be yourself. So, you know, after I was finished, you know, I submit, okay? It was on a Friday, last Friday, and on Monday, I get a phone call, okay? Wanting to invite me to an interview, was very impressed with my resume. Let me tell y'all, after I agreed to do the interview on Tuesday, okay, the very next day after they called me, as soon as I got the phone, I had like all these butterflies in my stomach. I felt like I was ready to go throw up. I was so scared. I was nervous. I was like, oh my God, what did I just set myself up for? What am I doing? I'm never going to get this job. Oh my God, April, you're going to have to go and like be around different people. What the hell are you thinking? I was so scared. No, you're not going to even go. I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to go. And it was like, okay, just go. Later on that day, Tati had like drilled me on questions to ask and ways to answer questions. And every time she would ask me these questions, like she was testing me, I would take forever to answer. And I was just like so scared. Okay. So scared. Um, I had to relax and I had to think to myself, April, why are you so worried about your old job um, for healthcare? Why are you so worried about answering and thinking about situations from that job? You might not have clocked in for the man because you are the man. You didn't work for yourself for all these years. So answer them from your own personal experience. Think of it as that. And so once I thought of it as that, and I, I realized April, that is a job. Some people say it's not, but it is, okay? It is a damn job. When I used what I've been doing over the past 14, 15 years, it was like a piece of cake. When I went to that interview, my bestie said, she was like, so you took over the interview. I guess you could say I did. I asked questions. We had like a great conversation. And that was on Tuesday. He, he said, unfortunately, I have to interview somebody on Thursday, but I We'll get back to you on Friday, let you know my choice. Girl, listen, Friday, first of all, started off not so great because I had to go to the vein doctor and I had to get a procedure done and I had to be put to sleep for this. So they had to go and close off more of my veins. But anyway, Friday, after I came home, after I was, um, you know, I was taken home after the procedure, the gentleman called and he was like, I got the job. So my orientation training starts on um, the 26th of February. But the only thing is, it is a remote job. I get to stay home. However, it's like a hybrid job, so you can go in the office if you want to, or you can just work from home. But for three months, I have to do training in office, so we'll see how that goes. But let me tell y'all something. I want to go work for the cable company, okay, the Cast Cable Company, because, you know, when you work for any cable company, you get free internet, and free, you get free Wi-Fi and free cable services, and if you have a phone with them, free phone service, okay? Let me tell y'all, the cable company has so many jobs that are open right now. I do have, like, about 20 tabs, 20 tabs for remote jobs for Cox Cable, okay? In my city, in my state, there are so many. I think there's like 182 Cox. of them. Just go to Google and type in Cox Careers. If you're looking for a remote job or a job, just type in that. Girl, they have great benefit packages. Who don't want free cable, free internet? I just want something to do, and I want to be able to save my money that I already have and just use my, my work money for just paying my bills. That's what I want to do. And this is why I'm doing this for, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to build more money while working. If I can work for them, then I can cut off a $173 bill for internet. Then I can also cut off a $120 bill from Hulu, okay, live. Then I can also get rid of some of those Amazon channels that I have subscribed to and don't even bother watching. 
person, okay? I could make more money and save some money from working a job. So I'm just saying, so I'm going to apply for that. But yeah, you guys, if you're looking for a job, just type in Google Cox Careers and it'll be right there, like the first choice that you go to. They have loads of jobs, remote jobs, girls, some of the paying really, really good. So I'm just saying. So anyway, I did get the job. I just wanted to share that with you Real guys. Talk. This Real Talk was emailed to me. Okay, first of all, before we even begin that, I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to try it on some She Glam um, makeup with y'all. So I figured, and that's what I was going to do until I checked my email and then I seen the email. So I was like, you know what? Well, I'm just going to include it in my, my chit chat for trying on the makeup. So I got my little sprout back here, my little sprout, my little sprout of a ponytail. And yeah, I'm going to just put on my other ponytail. So girl, I got this human hair ponytail. It's a wrap ponytail. I got this human hair ponytail from Sheen. Also, you know, girl, girl I pay for this. Okay. So as I was saying, um, I do have some makeup that I'm going to be trying out. The new Ember Rose Collection by She Glam. And if you've never tried any other She Glam cosmetics, then, you know, check it out. They do have some really affordable collections. Some of them are really, really cute and chic looking. The whole aesthetic of it is just super cute. I do also like their um, primer, their facial primer, which I'm going to be using in this video. They sent me their new collection, which consists of like some blushes and cream blushes, a bunch of lipsticks, small eyeshadow palette. But most of this, most of all, importantly, we just going to chit chat. I'll probably just show stuff. And like I said, it's the Ember Rose Collection by She Glam. This is their makeup uh, collection. They have like the cutest stuff, like a little lipstick palette kit or a lipstick kit. Comes with four lipsticks, guys. Four of them. I do have some blushes. I was sent three of these cream blushes. Eyeshadow palette. Yes, this is an eyeshadow palette, okay? So it's just foldable and opens up like an accordion. These are the colors. Also, they did send me four of their long-lasting matte lipsticks, four glosses, and their little kit right here, which is the Dynamic Bloom Long-Lasting Matte Lipstick. You can buy the whole entire kit like so or maybe just buy a single. I think and I some of the products that I'm going to be using are going to be She Glams. I'm going to definitely be using the She Glam Good so Grip. This is going to be a real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about, you can go ahead and send me an email to aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com or you can and please subject the world, subject real talk or you can send me one to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to also put in the subject line, real talk. If you want me to use your own natural name or you want me to make up one for you or you want to change it, that is up to you. You know, this is just my thoughts and my thoughts only, as well as the divas and devos in the comment section's thoughts. Awesome. So, you know, I'm just going to read the email to you guys. Hi, April. I hope all is well. My name is Sharon, and I have been an avid watcher of your channel forever, and I appreciate the time you take in all your videos. I know you stated at the end of February you would be bringing Real Talk back, but I'm really hoping you can post this before, before then, as I am really in need of your opinion, along with the other men and women who watch. Let me start off by giving you a little backstory. I'm a 45-year-old woman, and I have been with my significant other, whom is 47, for, for going on 15 years now. So Sharon is 45 years old. She has been with the same person, her significant other, for 15 years now. Her significant other is 47. We are not married. However, we have been engaged now for over five years and share three children together, ages 11, 9, and 5 years old. I work a full-time job as a dental assistant and have been with the same employer for 18 plus years. My significant other, who you can call Rich, has had multiple jobs since I've been knowing him. I would estimate a total of 10 jobs or more. I stopped keeping count. Rich has not seeked employment for over a year. When I say seek, I mean he has not looked for employment for well over a year since the late 2022. He doesn't have to care for our children during the day because they are all in school full time as well as have an after school program through the Boys and Girls Club until 630 p.m. Monday through Friday. We both have vehicles, so that is not a reason for him to not seek employment. April, when I say I do everything, I mean I do everything from bringing the children to school and picking them up from the Boys and Girls Club after I get off of work. He does make sure the house is clean and laundry is done. However, I am the breadwinner. I pay all bills, including his car note and gas for his car. I cook dinner every other night because I make enough for leftovers the next day. When I have spoken to him regarding this pattern of non-employment, his answer to me was, I don't want to work for the man. I want to become an online gamer to earn money like other people. Or, he says, I want to start my own business selling clothes and fake purses. April, for one, all this man does during the day is play his damn Xbox. And I know this because when I speak to him throughout the day, I can hear the game in the background. My finances are great, but I am so tired of taking care of three kids and a grown man. I love Rich so much. It's been 15 years with him. And honestly, I don't know what I would do without him. 
However, don't think it's fair to me and our children for me to be pulling all the way. I do get it sometimes. We as people can get in a slump, but some of his requests seem impossible to go along with, such as being an online gamer or starting a business selling fake purses. No one wants to work for anyone else, but if that is what it keeps food on the table, then what else are you supposed to do? I'm not getting any younger, and I would have thought that an adult in their 40s would have it together by that age. I feel sometimes putting him out and sending him packing to his mother's house so he can see what it's like without me and the kids. I probably sound ridiculous right now because I know better as a grown woman. Maybe he's depressed or needs more motivation. I've tried talking with him, but when I try, he's either playing a video game or playing with the kids or cleaning up after the kids. And then when it's time for bed, he's all over me and not understanding that I'm dead tired from the day and just want to relax and close my eyes. I apologize for this being so long. Oh, word. And I hope you can air this before the end of February. Also, thank you so much for bringing Real Talk back. That was a favorite of mine to watch on your channel. I never thought I would be writing to you, and maybe this is long overdue. I just need some guidance on how to approach the situation, please. Thank you, Sharon. But basically, let's break it down. Sharon is 45. Rich is 47. They've been together for 15 years. They have three children, and their ages are 11, 9, and 5 years old. She works as a dental assistant at the same employer for 18-plus years, and that's great because so you know her finances are good, like she said, because she's been at the same job for 18-plus years. And a dental assistant, they make pretty good damn money. My significant other, she said that Rich has had 10 jobs within the 15 years she's known him, and he hasn't even seeked employment since late 2022. He doesn't have, he, he don't take the kids to school. He don't pick them up after the, the um, Boys and Girls program. Okay, you know what? Who is selling fake purses in their late 40s? He on, he's 47. We might as well round his ass off and say he's 50. Because, okay, we just going to say that he's closer to 50 than he is 40. So he not only wanting to sell the fake purses, he wanted to make a career out of it. He don't even want to make it as a side hustle. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't say that he wanted that to be his side hustle. He said that he, Rich, himself, 47-year-old Rich, wants to either start a business of his own selling fake clothes and fake purses, or he wants to be an online gamer. Okay? I mean, I'm, shit, anything is possible. I ain't even gonna lie. Anything is possible. But I would I would definitely have a job job before even um, being an online gamer or selling fake purses and clothes. Like, I don't know. Y'all know anybody who sells fake purses and fake clothes and fake clothes as a living? Like, that's their only job. That's their main job. Like, and if so, do they have a store that they're doing this, or are they just selling this out the back of their car? Because I could see if they had a store and they was doing this, but it hits a little different than selling it out the back of your your trunk. Like it just hits a little bit different. However, if you're selling it in a store, your ass is gonna go down like Nino in the car, the baby. I, I could I would not say that I want to be an online gamer and I want to sell fake purses and clothes. Did he mean Sharon? Did he mean he wanted to do both? Like his main priority job would be the online gamer because to me that would make a lot more sense because you don't go to jail for that. You know what I'm saying? You sell and get caught selling some counterfeit shit, you don't go to jail. Eventually your ass gonna get in trouble. So I would hope that that would be like his side hustle. But then again, I really wouldn't hope for him to have an online gamer channel and not have a follow backward background job like. You ain't going to just be popping as soon as you get on YouTube. You're going to have to work your way up to that. People have to fire you and shit. You ain't going to just get on there on Monday, and by Wednesday, you got a million subscribers. And, yeah, that's not happening, buddy. Girl, listen, I, I'm not even here to tell him what he might want to do. Sharon asking me advice, but she already seemed like she know the answer because she just say that this is long overdue. Did she, did she say she sound ridiculous? Let me see. Did she say that she sound ridiculous? Because I know I heard the word ridiculous in here. Oh, I probably sound ridiculous. You think? Yeah. Sharon, you sound ridiculous. All right. It's one thing when you be with somebody and they lose their job. But homeboy has had no job in since late 2022. Okay. Where the fuck are we doing that at? He ain't had no job since late 2022. And um, he's not even looking for a job. He said, And he doesn't want to work for the man. OK, he doesn't want to work for the man. Well, here's the thing. I don't know. I don't even know what to say regarding him. For Sharon, my advice to you, girl, you better fucking grow some balls. OK, that's great. You the breadwinner. So that means you take on a man and a female, the male and a female role. That's great. 
So since you are the breadwinner and you playing both roles, sweetheart, I feel like you really need to put your foot down because you are really getting walked all over, stomped on, and better yet, taken advantage of. Who the hell in their late 40s, close to 50, want to want to play games online all day, okay? And then on top of that, what woman is putting up with that? Y'all got three kids together, and she knows she sound ridiculous because she came to me and said this shit before I even had a chance to say it. So she knows she sound ridiculous. Let me tell y'all something, and this is just my opinion. Like, this is my opinion. My thought, this is me. You know you can do bad by yourself, right? Just because you've been with somebody for 15 years does not mean that you got to be with them for the rest of your life, especially if they're not doing anything positive to contribute to your lifespan together. Like, straight facts. Like, who the hell wants to take care of a grown-ass child? You're taking care of a grown-ass child and three other kids, and he don't even have the decency to take the kids to school so that way you don't have to leave the house early on your way to work. And we know she leave the house earlier than she could. You know what I'm saying? That's a, like an extra 10 minutes or maybe even an extra 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes that she could sit at home, maybe enjoy a meal, breakfast, a coffee or something. Meanwhile, we got this dumb derelict playing online video games, acting like he want to go ahead and sell fake Gucci knockoffs and coach bags along with Louis Vuitton to suffice the relationship and make a game plan and making himself become money rich, okay? This is why I be saying that's why I'm single, because, listen, I was in a relationship for 23 fucking years, 23, all right? I wish a motherfucker would have wanted to be an online gamer and sell fake purses. Now, granted, he did sell some knockoff Air Forces and sneakers out of the trunk, but he also did have a real job working at the hospital, so I give him that. That was his little side hustle along with getting drunk, okay, for his beer money, I guess. I don't know. But here's the thing. When you're in your 40s, don't you ever want to just sit there and relax? Like, you just want to relax. You need to take a deep breath. You feel like in your 40s, you should, your late 40s, damn near 50, because, Sharon, you are in the middle cutoff, so we're going to just say, because you can't really go back to 40. So, sweetheart, bitch, you on your way to 52 So as well. So let's just get this straight. You either going to set the rules or put your foot down or set his ass back to his mama, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, let me tell you, look, okay, I ain't trying to ruin nobody's relationship. I Listen, okay, like I said the last time, if y'all are happy and y'all are having a very healthy relationship, then I wish, not, I wish nothing but the best for you guys because that's how it should be. Each person in the relationship should be able to lean on one another when the times get bad and the times get tough. However, it does not say anything about taking advantage of the other person. You mean to tell me you're going to allow some grown-ass man that's in their late 40s, about to be 50, grown-ass child, sit at home all day long and play video games, and when you call, you hear it in the background, this nigga don't even cook the hell with... Um, did she say... She said she had the audacity to say, well, he keeps the house clean and... um. What, what was it? He he keeps the house clean and does the laundry. She didn't even say he fucking picked the kids up because he don't even bring the kids to and from school or to and from to school and pick up after the daycare thing with the program or whatever you call it at the Boys and Girls Club. He don't do that and he got a car. Okay, what is he trying to save on gas because he know he don't want to keep asking you for gas money because he ain't got no income. She didn't even say he had a hobby that bring in income. This nigga sitting on the couch playing video games broke. And you talk about 15 years, that'd be the problem. It'd be the length of years. People be like, well, I've been with them for so-and-so, and so-and-so. So I don't give a fuck if I've been with them for 50 years. If they start acting the fuck up, doing dumb shit, disrespectful shit, non-compliant shit, then you got to go. Because you are not about to make me fucking be miserable every day with you while I am aging out every day with your ass every day. I'm not about to be miserable with no fucking body. There's no way. I don't give a damn if we've been together for 100 years. We vampires. You and your vampire blood-sucking ass are not about to suck me dry. I do not allow people to walk all over me. Trust and believe I've been there before, but not in my 40s. Nope, not in my 40s. This is, this is my thing. If you don't be wanting to really help me out and do what you're supposed to do as a man or a woman or whatever you want to call it, okay, then I'm, and I got to do everything on my own, then that means I need to be by myself on my own. If you have to do everything on your own, then for all that, you might as well be on your own. Like, what, what are you missing? She don't even want to have SEX because she tired, and I can't blame her. Shit, if you've been at work all day, the same job for 18 plus years, she probably, like, ain't good with them motherfucking people. So I'm pretty sure her finances is just great. And, like, what do you, if you get rid of the dude, what are you really missing out on? And you don't even get that, oh, excuse me, you don't even get that often because you be too too tired. So out of a month, she probably give it up on the weekends. You know, that's a weekend chore. She probably don't even want to be part of that either. I mean, I can't blame her. Shit, let me tell you something. Let me give y'all some past stories, okay? So this, like I said, I've been with the same person for that length of time, 23 years, okay? And it's a turn off when you be like the main breadwinner or you'd be the one that paid the most of shit. After a while, it really start eating you up. And you might have said, 
well, you know, I'm going to help you out as much as I can, and we in this together. Broke man could be a huge turnoff in any relationship. Y'all could have been together for, like, 20 years, and then this nigga ain't got no job, ain't trying to better himself, just be doing dumb shit. You get real turned off by a broke nigga. It don't matter how good the peen is, you will get real turned off by a broke man, okay? And I'm telling you this from experience. Trust me when I tell you. After a while, it's like, it'd be like the entitlement, you know what I'm saying? Like... The entitlement to me is like, um, they'll be like trying to talk to you any old kind of way. Like, first of all, don't think you're going to disrespect me when I got to give you gas money or cigarette money or weed money. Don't think you're going to talk to me like that. You out your rabbit ass mind if you think you're going to talk to me any old type of way when you don't even contribute to anything around here. And that's what it's going to start making you feel. But then she did say in another breath how... She don't know what she would do without him. Well, I, I could tell you quite a few things you could do without him. You would save a whole lot of money, honey. Okay, that's one thing. You would save a whole lot of money. You'll have one less mouth to feed. You don't have to worry about being aggravated. You can get you some good, decent rest every night, okay? And you're still going to be doing the same shit you already was doing, which is picking up the kids. There's nothing different about that. Picking up the kids. You're going to still be cooking because he wasn't even doing that. Oh, okay, so now you're going to have to clean the house and do the laundry. Well, that ain't no big thing. Y'all don't even be there like that. Like, you be at work, the kids be at school and the after-school program till like, 6.30. It closes. So you probably don't get home until, like, 6.30, 7 o'clock. So y'all just eat dinner and then take baths and shower and get ready for the next day. So the house shouldn't even be that messy, okay? So you ain't really got to worry about that too much. And doing the laundry, girl, you could do the laundry on the weekends, early in the morning or Friday night or evening, you know, something like that. I'm just trying to give you a game plan. I'm telling you, you're not really missing out on much of nothing with him going, okay? What I'm using, this is the She Glam um, face, face press powder. I'm, I am not going to deal with just about anything, okay? And if that means that I have to be alone forever, then I guess that's what that means. But I'm just not going to put up with anything. And it sucks because when you're in your late 40s, you should really, really, really know better. And you should just have life experience to where you know that you are not going to do certain things or put up with certain things or allow certain things. That that be me. That's my thoughts on it. But I mean, who am I to say? I could be definitely wrong. I could be I could be definitely right. When you get to a certain age bracket, there are certain things you should do and there are certain things you shouldn't do. It is nothing wrong with playing video games and playing Xbox or PlayStation or whatever you play. You know, there's nothing wrong with like personal hobbies or settling down for things you like to do. But also there does come a time and a place when you're doing all of these things, like playing video games online and, you know, all day long, and but you're not bringing in no income. Then it starts to be a problem. There's nothing wrong, like I said, of having a, a hobby of playing video games. Everybody loves video games. They're for any age group, you know? However, I think that that would be great for you to play video games after you get off of work, once, you know, you have downtime. That's me. Not allow it to take over your family because you're sitting there all day playing a video game. Like, how is that even going to bring in rent money or mortgage money or whatever? She didn't say if they owned a house or anything like that, but it doesn't even matter if she owns a house or not. She's got a whole bum living with her. And she's wondering what should she do? Well, I think what you should do, Sharon, is grow some balls. Okay, you, you need to think about what you really want. Do you want a grown man that loves to play video games and, and do the laundry? Okay, this, this man loves to play video games and do the laundry. Next up on the daily game, we have Rich. He loves to play video games and do laundry. His side hustle and fun time downtime is selling off knock up Louis Vuitton, Jimmy Choo, Gucci, and of course, Tom Ford. He is the number one hustler in the family. Goodbye. That's gonna be his unemployment profile, okay? Mm -hmm. And then she said he's not looking for work. He hasn't seeked employment in over a year. That nigga wouldn't be eating it in my house. I'm sorry to say that, but you haven't seeked employment since 2022. How are you supposed to eat then? He'd be, he be, he be working up energy. He'd work up an appetite from sitting on that couch and fiddling with that damn remote paddle all day long, okay? And I said fiddling because that's what the hell he's doing. His little thumbs and fingers and getting to work on that when he could just be filling out some job applications on the keyboard at the computer or laptop or whatever. Meanwhile, we got Rich sitting over here playing online ops, pretending to be a fucking soldier or whatever else in his dream career. And then it, when he when he when when he's ready to do a side hustle, he's selling fake-ass Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and knockoffs. You know, your neighborhood supplier for knockoff shoes, purses, and outfits. Okay? Yeah, that's... Mm hmm That's Sharon's man. Let me not leave out, basically. So they have three kids together. 
It doesn't matter if he if they got a boys or boys or girls or just a mixture. What type of example is he really setting for the kids? So if you if you're if you have a boy, a son, or sons in part of that family dynamic, you're just teaching your son to be a bum and live off a of woman. That's what you're teaching your sons. And if you got a daughter or daughters in that dynamic, you're just teaching your daughters to provide for a man, let him walk all over her, give birth to his children, and let him sell fake Gucci purses and Nike outfits. Okay? That's what that's what you're just teaching her. Meanwhile, she busts her ass all day and picks up the kids and cooks and cleans, okay? She's like an ongoing nanny type shit, okay? And then on when he's done fiddling with his fucking video game remote paddle, he's trying to fiddle on her. Been a game for five years, but I bet you I know why they've been engaged for five years. I bet you I know why. Because that dude ain't got no money to put down on no goddamn wedding reception, wedding ring, or wedding, 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 wedding venue, preacher, guest. He ain't got no money to put down on nothing. Y'all been engaged for five years, and y'all gonna be engaged for another five years if you keep allowing that shit. Girl, listen, you better than me, because if you have not looked for work in 20, since 2022, dude, you better look for another place to sleep. The shelter is always open for those who are in need of a bed. I don't know how some women just be putting up with so much shit and just be dealing with so much nonsense. Like, I don't know. I could be wrong for feeling this way or saying this, but I too have been dumb in my time. Yes, I have been dumb in my time. When I say I have been dumb in my time, meaning I have put up with dumb nonsense from my ex, okay? Not some. I put up with a lot of dumb stuff from him, for real. I ain't even gonna lie. But that's what you get the personal experience from. Because, you know, you could tell somebody until they blew in the face. You know what I'm saying? Run for your life. Run for the border. Run for your life. You know what I'm saying? Catch the next flight out of there or something. You, you know what I'm saying? People always warning us of certain situations. And... Ugh, but the sad part is, it's not even a sad part. We just keep going along with shit. I guess you could say it is kind of sad. I'm going to just say that she's confused. I, I think that's the best way that I can put it. She loves Richard. Of course you do. Of course you do. You've been with the man for so long. You have children with him. So, of course you love him. Does he love you? Does he love himself? Because if you are 50, damn near 50, you should have some type of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? You should have some type of values, motivation. You know what I'm saying? She says she doesn't know if he's depressed or if he needs motivation. Hold that thought for a second. So we're going to motivate this eyeshadow palette. So this, like I, I say, like I was saying, you guys, this is the Amber Rose eyeshadow palette. Hopefully y'all can see the colors. They're neutral. This one looks like an eggplant, like an off-white, like a light pink, like a dusty pink. And then we have like that dark brown. It's cute, though, because it's like an accordion. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to use the colors from the eyeshadow palette on my eyes as we just go along. I think she, I really, you know, I, I don't want to say, but I feel like, I feel like um, Sharon is like stuck. I feel like she's stuck. And I only say this because she's been with him for 15 years. You know what I mean? And 15 years is 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 a, is a, is a decent amount of time. I was in that situation once before too, but... After a while, it just feels like you go numb to, like, a lot of things that, you know, they have put in front of you in your path, that person that you're with. And eventually, you do get tired. You get fed up. You know, you just want to be kind of, like, over it. You know, you get used to doing things on your own. And I remember those days. Even if the person was, like, for me, I can say I remember those days, like, from living in New York you know, him being in jail, that still was no help to me because I had to do everything on my own for the kids. You know, I had to work. I had to put food on the table. I had to um, pay bills, pay rent, keep up the maintenance on my car, bring the kids to school, pick them up from daycare, go home, cook dinner. You know, I had to do all that stuff on my own because he wasn't there. So it's kind of like the same thing. Your man is there, but he still ain't there, like mentally. So I feel like it's kind of like the same same thing. But I had to do everything on my own. I'm going to be using this light color right here. Um, in the beginning, you know, I guess I got used to it because he went to jail quite a few times. So I guess you can say I did get used to it. And um, it became like second nature for me. I, I, I just got to the point where, you know, well, I didn't need nobody else's help. I surely didn't need a man in the picture that wasn't going to help me out mentally and financially. Like, we're in this together, but you keep putting yourself in a rut. And so even though your man, Sharon, is at home 
with you. He still doesn't have a job and you still have to provide for him. And when I say provide for him, I'm pretty sure he likes his little deodorant. You have to give, you have to buy for him because he ain't got his own money. Toilet paper because he need to wipe his ass. Of course, everybody in the house got toilet paper, but you would have so much more if he wasn't available. So you still have to provide for him financially. Same thing. He's not just living there and eating and mooching off of him, you. You still have to provide for him financially. And the same thing with me. I had to make sure he had his toothpaste and deodorant or, you know, his little package so he can get the things he needed. That shit becomes so exhausting. Either way, jail or not, you same shit. He's just there sitting on your couch. Mine's just there, not there. Okay? But it's the same shit. It's real exhausting. And when I say it gets real exhausting, it gets very exhausting after a while having to take care of a grown-ass man. I'm going to be using this purplish color right here. It gets very exhausting. And after a while, girl, that shit gets old. Like, when I say that shit gets old, it gets old, old. You have become numb to the whole entire situation. You just start looking at the person much differently. You get turned off. Nothing that he does is, like, satisfying to you. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to have sex with them. After a while, girl, let me tell you, you get so numb and so tired of the person and their actions and the way they're moving, that you, you you just don't even look at them the same anymore. And I'm not sure if you're to that point because you kindly, you kindly said, I don't know what I would do without him. Is that what she said? Let me see, because I don't want to, you know, miss word what she said. I love her so much. It's been 15 years with him, and honestly, I don't know what I would do without him. Well, girl, what you would do without him you save a lot of fucking money. That's what you would do without him. Yeah, okay. And I'm not telling her to break up with dude because that's not my place, okay? I am not a matchmaker, nor am I Dr. Phil or anything like that. I just know this, okay? That's what I'm going to say. After a while, you just feel like, what are you doing all of this for? Like, everybody has their moment in life when they decide enough is enough, enough is enough. Everybody has that moment. As a 45-year-old woman, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? How about that one? You got kids. You got little kids still because you said there was 11, 9, and 5. That's little kids, okay? Those are little kids. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? Do you want to carry on somebody else's burden, somebody else's weight? Do you want to keep being irritated and aggravated because this man is in your house or y'all house together and he ain't doing nothing? He's not pulling away. You want to come home every day miserable after you have picked up your children that he could have done, okay? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to continue on being miserable? Okay, what, what do you want to do? Either way, this is your life. Me, if it were me, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be eating off of me for too long. That's a that's a must because I'll make you feel real fucking uncomfortable to where you be you be wanting to go back to your mother's house. Okay. You'll be wanting to go back there. That's how I that's how I give it up. And I'm not just gonna do things to make you um, feel uncomfortable. I'm gonna run my goddamn mouth and I'm gonna make sure you know you need to stand up on your own two feet. You need to be about business and you need to get it done, or else you can get going. Okay. That's what I would do. That that's just me. Not saying that you gotta do the same thing, but I'm just saying. Ain't nobody about to take that, that nonsense for too long. Whoop. Like, straight fast. What would you do, Sharon, if that was one of your friends and she was asking you for that advice? What would you do? Let me put on my lashes real quick, guys. So I went ahead and put my lashes on. Also, guys, girl, this video is, like, all over the place. I did use the, I thought it was brown, but it's called Box of Chocolate. The color is called Box of Chocolate. I used the Box of Chocolate, so I guess it is brown on my outer corner to make the V, but doesn't it look like it's brown? Maybe it's because I have it over the, over that, like that purplish one. But this is the color. This came out really cute. And it's the Ember Rose Collection. This is the four shadow eyeshadow palette. This is really cute uh, because you can take this with you. Like, this is really travel appropriate. Look how it just bends like it's an accordion. So I did use all of the colors in this eyeshadow palette. And it came out, it, it came out really cute. This is my version of it. I think I'm going to touch up the brown, the box of chocolate a little bit more on this side. But as far as Sharon, you know, I feel like this. We all do end up getting stuck in our own ways. Sometimes we end up getting stuck in a relationship. And sometimes, you know, it can be a little tricky or it can be a little hard to get out of. Depending on the situation, they got three kids together. You know, that's for one. Um, and they've been together for 15 years. Like some people think like as of in the years because it's been so lengthy that's the reason why you should stay together that's the reason why you should continue on in your relationship me personally i don't really feel that way when it comes to a relationship yeah i would like to keep a relationship if you have been with somebody for so long it would be nice to stay together you know what i mean and not have to separate and work things out but she didn't really get into detail about she did say that when she does try to talk to him it's he's either cleaning 
or cleaning up after the kids or playing a video game. Talking to someone is always a great thing. That's that's a must. That's the only way you can communicate. I mean, if you can't talk, then there are other means of communication. I feel like some in some situations, there are some situations where I would say, you know, let's let's take this out in the open, like let's go somewhere publicly. So that way we don't start arguing. At least in public we can have a deeper mindset. We might be able to control our self, you know, our tempers and be able to conduct a, a good conversation. You know, some people are better in public public places having a conversation with them. And that's only because they don't want to embarrass themselves. Like, I know me, I don't want to embarrass myself or nothing. And I don't want anybody embarrassing me in public either. I would suggest that, you know, taking him out. But then it's like, girl, do you really want to take him out? You done did enough. And you should be able to talk to him in the privacy of your home because y'all been together for 15 years and y'all have kids. This is my thing. You know what, girl? I would talk to him, but it wouldn't be during the time that he'd be either playing a game or he cleaning up, you know, because here's the thing. If you try to talk to him during the game, you're going to get pissed off and you're going to turn the game off. And then it's going to be a whole different type of argument. And ain't nobody going to be paying attention, especially him. And he's going to try to probably cry victim. OK, one thing I hate worse is a man crying victim because of something a woman said or vice versa. You know, what I'm saying? especially when you ask for it. I think the best time to do to talk to him is when he's trying to, you know, fiddle on top on you. OK, when he's trying to fiddle on you, let him know. Listen, we need to have a talk. What? Sit up, sit up right in the bed when he started trying to fiddle on you. Listen, we need to have a long talk because things are not working out here. Not in my favor and definitely not in your favor. And I need to know what's going on and the reason for you not seeking employment. I get it. Everybody want to have a side hustle. And I do think that selling, you know, knockoffs or whatever is a great side hustle or a video game channel, gaming channel where you bring in some extra money is a great side hustle. That's a great side hustle to a job, a job where that's going to bring you in some income. That's, that's, that's how I would approach the situation because straight up for real, he seems like a big child and anybody who thinks like, Oh, selling knockoff purses and clothes is going to benefit in the long run. Maybe it will. I can't speak for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I can't speak for everybody. But business will get slow. And one way or another, you're going to get caught. And God forbid that you do. I don't try to wish bad luck on no effing body, okay? But I'm just saying this. One way or the other, you're going to get in trouble, and that ain't going to last. You know, there's always new competition out there. And that new competition might have some better bags than you got going on, or, you know, just better timing, get the product faster, cheaper prices. Who knows? But, you know, you can let them know that's a great, those are great side hustle ideas to bring in extra income from the job that you should be working. But what you should do, honey, I don't know how many times you had a talk with this man. The best thing for you to do is to have a talk with him now. When it's the time, the timing is right. When he's trying to be fiddling on you and not those remote buttons, that's the right timing. You know what I mean? That's the time because any other time, he too busy, you too busy. You don't want to talk about this in no text message. Okay, so let's not do that. But that's your private time. That's your quiet time. That's your, your downtime. And I think that is the perfect time for having a conversation with him about bringing in some income. You know what I mean? What, this is the thing I'm thinking about. What you going to do when you can't work no more and you retire? You ain't going to have no money to retire. Or, oh, okay. So you have 10 other jobs. She said she stopped counting. Okay. I mean, I could say at least he had a job, but why did he get fired? Did he quit? What was the reason of losing these jobs? Does he get bored fast? I, you know, I would want to say the nigga gets bored fast, but then I feel like I'm just taking up for him. And let Sharon, let Sharon know in the comments what your thoughts are. What would you do in this situation if this was you? at 45 and your man is 47 and he thinks that he's going to be an online gamer when he decides to grow up. I can't even say when he does grow up. All I can say is when he decides to grow up. That was the real talk for this. We're going to continue on with this real quick. I thank y'all for staying tuned with me and things of that nature. You know, it's Saturday. Let me tell y'all, okay, as I continue on with this, um, I, girl, listen, I hate to say this about myself. Sometimes I could be like a hoarder, okay? Like I was saying, you know, I cleaned up my room, okay? And I, I, I did have a huge bin of clothes that I wasn't willing to part with. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with not wanting to part with something, some things that you really, really like. I have, I have problems sometimes like that. But when it comes to throwing things out, I can do it too. I can definitely throw things out. I always be having like these visual ideas in my head, like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this and make this look great and do this. So I have bought these two plants off of Amazon, okay? You can either buy one or you can buy a set of them. And I can't remember what the name of the plants are, but they're just faux plants. And they're tree plants are basically just faux big tree plants. You know, feng shui, bring, back, bring that room aesthetic, just, you know, something different. 
um, for my bedroom and also for my living room. And I had always wanted like a really nice big faux plant, but they are not cheap, okay? They are definitely not cheap. So I ended up finding like some really nice ones on Amazon and you can either get them in five feet or six feet, what have you. The faux plants are not cheap, girl. So I got two five feet ones. I think it was $59. That got, of course, I read the reviews first because that's always a must on Amazon. You, you definitely got to read the reviews. I like to see them with pictures, you know, same thing like with Shein, you know what I mean? I like to see them with pictures. You see the reviews of people. So I was like really impressed. I was so happy when they came. I put one in my living room and um, I put one in my bedroom. So when I'm doing like my try on hauls, that nature, you know, I got something nice in the background, you know, make it jazz it up a little bit. You know, I've been trying to change up my video. So that's for one. So I called myself yesterday. I was cleaning my room. I said, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to clean my room real quick. And then I'm going to my videos. Please tell me why the cleaning up of the room took more time than I really expected it to. I was just like, this is this is not what was supposed to go down. I was supposed to do this quick, but I started doing all kind of stuff, dusted. It was just like a little bit of nice now. Okay. Look, these are the blushes that was sent. These are the cream blushes from She Glam. I have Love Language, which is a color like this. And then I have Soulmate, which is like this. And then I have I'm Yours, okay? So I don't know which one I want to try. But I figure I will try I'm Yours first. They're cream blushes, okay? And then they come in these cute little tins. This is the one called I'm Yours, okay, baby? It really doesn't look like it's cream, but we're going to see. It is cream, but you can really never tell. Ooh, that is very bright, okay? Very, very bright. Ooh, uh, unshine it a little bit. So that is the I'm Yours one. That's very bright, okay? Yeah. It's still cute, though. But let me try this other one. Love, love language. This looks more like a corally color peach. You know, that's more like my shindig. So, yeah, I, I cleaned up my room. I started just dusting. And, girl, I think I got kind of, like, carried away. Did some laundry. You ever hate when you do laundry, okay? Because sometimes I'll do the laundry. And then I'll forget about it. This color looks a little bit rustic. I don't know. Because, see, this color didn't look this pink. But this is... This one is, what is this called? Love language. So this is the one I'm going to try on now. So um, let's try this side. Oh, I think I like this color a little bit more because it's not so bright. Though I did put a lot on. Oh, my God. I mean, the left side for me is never my best side. I don't know why, but I can never get my makeup like perfect like my right side. Never, just like never. I really do like this color, though. Um, this this cream blush, though, I've had some cream blushes that are really oily, okay? Like, super oily. That, I will say about the She Glam one, is not oily. You ever try a cream, a cream blush, and it actually just takes off your foundation and everything. This is Soulmate. Oh, she's very dark. I don't know if I would want to put this on. So this is what Soulmate looks like. Let me just put it on my, my hand so you guys can see. This is Soulmate. I like this. I do like this. Pancake, behave. So let me tell y'all about my experience. I'm going to put some pressed powder on. Let me tell y'all about my experience while we're still doing this makeup thing. This was the blushes. And the eyeshadow actually came out really nice. But let me tell you about my experience on Friday while I was getting my veins. So as I explained to you guys before, I, I went and got my veins done because, you know, I have very bad varicose veins. It's called vein disease. You know, if you've ever seen someone that is like older, an elderly person, maybe not even all elderly people, but they have like these really big, huge legs. Their legs hurt a lot. They, they're big and swollen. That's how my legs could look if I don't get taken care of what I, you know, what I have going on. Hold on real quick, guys, because I'm going to go ahead and put on... Okay, so on. like I was saying, I went... You know, I had to go get my veins done. So the first time that I went, I didn't expect the pain that I was feeling. And it wasn't even the first time. This was the first time at this new doctor's office. First is where I used to go like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Real quick, and just fill you in on what we're about to do. They did send me all of these lipsticks. And I think four of them were gloss, glosses. And these are the colors of the glosses right here. If you guys can see that, these are all the glosses. These are the lipsticks, which are 
the Dynamite Boom Long Lasting Matte Lipsticks. But these are the four Dynamite Matte Long Lasting Lipsticks. And then in this box here are the Dynamite Boom Long Lasting Matte Lipsticks as well. But they look like this in the box. Really chic, pretty nice little box. So I guess you could either buy them single or you can buy them like this. So because they're already in this box and they're easy to get out versus open the box, we're just going to do a swatch. So I went like a month and a half ago, right before Christmas, to get my veins done. I was not expecting the pain that I felt because, like I said, I was very familiar with going to this other doctor's office that was doing my veins, and they would just numb me in, like, a certain area, and they would use, like, this medical glue that was supposed to be, like, really great glue, okay, uh, because it's medical, but a lot of insurances don't want to use it or be have it being used on their patients because it's not really, they, they don't think that it'll last for long, and some of the some of it did not. My veins ended up opening back up. So when I went, like, right before Christmas, I did not expect the pain that I was feeling. Um, the color I'm going to use is called Bliss because it's, like, this peachy kind of color. These are the other colors. Um, I want to use this one because this is, like, the colors that I use. Very cute casing. So this is, wasn't the color that I thought it was going to be. So this is Bliss on my lips. And it does be, get very matte, though. It is kind of nice. It does get matte. Ooh, I kind of like the color, okay? So what would I put on top of it? I think I will put this, um, I'm going to swatch the other three. This is the lip gloss, and I think I would use this lip gloss right here, which is Amore. Okay, my Sherry Amore. That's the, that's the lip gloss that I'm going to use because I feel like it matches best, but I should put, like, some color to it. So, but I want to represent the real true color, but it, it, also I do want to change the color up. So when I first went to this new doctor's office, which, like I said, was probably like back in, I want to say like um, right before Christmas, like during Thanksgiving time or something like that, um, when they put the, the numbing in me, I thought I was going to be okay. I really did think I was going to be okay. This lipstick is very matty. I really was thinking, like I said, that I was going to get the same type of pain um, from the last doctor, which really is really no pain. So this is the lip gloss, which is the Immortal Love Nourishing Lip Gloss, and the color is called Amore. And I picked this one because I just felt like it would match better with the lipstick that I have on. It has like a doe foot, got a little weight to it. So not bad. Okay. I wanted a little bit lighter color, but that'll do. So now we're going to swatch the other colors. So we already used the Amour, Amour and Bliss lipstick, matte lipstick and gloss. I'm going to just swatch, okay? So we have three more lipsticks to swatch. When I first went to this new place, like I said, they numb me in like this certain area. And girl, when I tell you it felt like when they started doing the work, I kid you not, it felt, and this is the only way that I could describe it, it felt like a building had collapsed on my legs. It was that much pressure. And everyone, every patient in the waiting area could hear me, so I was told. So I was never offered any anesthesia or anything like that. When I made another appointment, like months later, like about two weeks ago, they did tell me that I could have the option of having um, an anesthesia or local, which is the local is what I had the last time. And girl, I didn't want to go through that no more. I don't know how I feel about this color on my lips. I don't know. It's very, it's just, it's just not going with the lips, the eyes. So let's just see something. So Friday when we went, right, Tati went with me because, of course, your girl chose the anesthesia. Like, you was not about to be making me feel uncomfortable. That was so uncomfortable. Let me just put this lipstick on real quick, guys. So now I have three more colors left. And I'm going to try this Cherish You one right here because this looks more like my color. We, we shall see so when this lipstick goes on, it's very smooth and nourishing feeling. It feels really great. And now I'm going to, for the top lip, I'm going to use the color Passion, okay? This is the color I was looking for. So it goes on like really, ooh, I like this color. It goes on really smooth and it just matte super quick. And the colors now that I have on is called Cherish You on my lips. So um, Tati was in there with me the whole time that I was getting my procedure done. And ladies started the IV in my hands. So when she started it, I was laying on my stomach and she was, 
they told me to turn over, and I don't even remember them telling me that. Like, I remember turning over, but I was I fell asleep the first time on my stomach, and Tati said I was just a yapping away. I was telling her how much I love her, and I just was yapping away, just yapping away. This color that I'm going to try on as in the lip gloss, because there's three lip glosses left, and this is the color right here, which is called Unconditional. I fell asleep with my eyes open. It was just like this really... I, it just seemed like it happened so fast. I don't remember any of it. All I know is when they woke me up, I was out of it. Okay. You're definitely going to need some type of um, gloss on top of the, the lipstick because it is very matte to where it feels kind of rough on your skin, if that's the way I could put it. But yeah, so this was in the color Unconditional. This is Unconditional that I just put on my lips, which is like this pinkish kind of mauve color. Okay, then the next gloss that we have is called, the two glosses left, we have, this is where you, you realize that you have to get your glasses on because you have such bad eyesight, okay? Far and near. Like, I think I can see better far than I can see near. And God forbid, this is called treasure. Oh my God, my eyes are killing me. So when I woke up, you know, they did help me. Um, I, I came in my own shorts because I didn't, oh, this is like a really pretty, like chocolate-like color almost. This is treasure, really chocolatey-like color, nice. And the last color is called everlasting. You know how you, you can't see, you have to fix your eyes, you have to really, really focus, okay? So when I woke up, you know, they helped me put on my socks and bandaged my leg up and um, I was wheeled out, you know, and went home. Everlasting, very maroon, pretty, like, nice. Tati probably will love this color because she loves these colors. So that was the lipstick, the, the glosses, excuse me. That was the glosses. And then this lipstick right here, which is called My Beloved. So this lipstick right here is called My Beloved, and it will go nice with that lip gloss that's right next to it. They're both, like, in the same family color. So, yeah, my leg is really bruised. Um, hopefully it does help me in the long run with my health and my walking, but... Yeah, you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this very long video. I do apologize. It was all over the place. This was like a real talk, but it was really supposed to be about the products. But I kind of incorporated the both of them. I hope you guys was all right with that. If not, then just let me know, okay? But um, don't be disrespectful, though, okay? Check out She Glam. I will post everything down below for them. I think the look came out really cute. You know, um, I was a little bit heavy-handed on that cream blush. You definitely need to go light on that when using it, but um, I do like it. The colors did come out really cute and stuff. So, you guys, I will see y'all in the next one. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, like the videos. And if you want a Real Talk video made about you, all you need to do is send me an email to aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com or Muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject lines for either or email called Real Talk. I hope you guys can leave Sharon your comments and your opinions below of what she needs to do about Rich or what she needs to do about herself in general. I will see y'all on the next one, Divas and Divalicious. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. And I love you all. Oh, 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 oh